Welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum and today's Snare Spotlight series. We are delving into my first nice snare drum that I ever got. It's a Noble and Cooley 7x14 solid maple. Um, I've had it for, gosh, almost 20 years. And this was the, the first time that a drum really made me think about how I needed to work on my playing. <laughs> Uh, because I'd never had anything that was so articulate and so uh, unforgiving in terms of like projecting exactly what it is that you're doing. Noble & Cooley is an incredible company. They've been around for a very long time. They've been building drums since 1854 and they actually built the drums for the Union Army in the Civil War. Noble & Cooley is based in Granville, Massachusetts, where they have a huge facility and they're one of the companies, one of the kind of rare companies now that actually make all of their own shelves. There's no Keller or anything like that going on here. It's all in-house. They bend their own stuff. And this uh, solid snare is kind of like their flagship instrument. Um, they do drum sets and they do ply snares and uh, metal snares and some other things as well. And they also invented a lot of the things that we take for granted in terms of modern snare design. Um, their mechanism is still one of the best. It's very simple. Their lugs are nodal in that they are only screwed in in one location, which according to them is the spot that affects the resonance of the shell the least in terms of the overall sound of the drum. Um, let's see what else. Lacquer finish, uh, very sharp 45 degree bearing edges that do not have any counter cut at all, and kind of medium wide snare beds. They're not super dramatic, they're not super deep, they're kind of like right down the middle. It's a solid maple shell with re-rings, and this particular one is a seven inch depth. They do a variety of depths. I saw an eight inch one in Nam a couple of years ago and they go down to, you know, piccolos and 13s and things like that. Um, if anybody remembers the tune One Headlight by the Wallflowers, that super crazy pop, that was a uh, piccolo solid ply, one of these guys. And they are a mainstay in studios as well. People tell me that they buy them for their studios and that uh, studios are excited to see them when they come in. Um, for a couple of reasons. Number one is they record exceptionally well, and number two, they have a really extraordinary tuning range. And because of the specific design, um, and a couple of commenters have compared them to Caraviatos and other solid snares, uh, these definitely have a specific vibe to them, and I find all of them that I've played to be very articulate and very dry, and also they seem to generate a lower and fatter fundamental at a given tuning than similar drums. I have definitely played this drum a lot. There's paint missing from the rims and there's some dings in the side and stuff like that. It's definitely seen a lot of action. Um, I was able to track down in my closet the original wires. And Noble & Cooley uses these very unique wires on the bottom that are actually knotted on the snare end of the strings. And the idea is that you pull a loop of string through the snare mechanism and then you can hold that tight while you screw it down inside of the mechanism. It is just held in by pressure from the wires. There's no um, springs or any other kind of moving parts in there. It just flips and it's amazingly sturdy. I think all the hardware on this is brass. In fact, some of the original uh, screws are even brass. And right now it's got a brand new G1 on top, one ply 10 mil coated and a 300 on the bottom and we're just going to play a little bit and show you what it can do. So listening to those two sounds, the wires on and off, you can hear how high the drum is tuned. It's actually tuned really high right now, but with the wires on, it's still pretty dark. The snare side head is pretty tight, not tabletop, but pretty tight. Batter's pretty tight too. But for some reason, uh, these particular drums, they don't mind getting cranked up like that. They sound really good that way. And uh, especially in a big room where the room sound is gonna sort of like 
increase the volume of that and, and make it sound big, you get this incredible cut, um, especially with these die cast hoops on here. And yeah, this is, this is a favorite. Um, I don't use it that much anymore because it's kind of sentimental at this point, but it's a real sweetheart. The guy I bought it from said it was the house drum at the Grand Ole Opry for years and can't back that up, but it definitely sounds like it could have been. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Again, please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, let us know if you have one of these or if you've ever gotten to play one or what you think about it. I really think they make super special instruments and if you're looking for kind of an end-all be-all, you know, maple snare drum if you want the quintessential, you can't really go wrong with one of these.